Coming up on the FTC Open Alliance Show, 17012 Precision Guessworks from Indiana joins us to break down their progress for the Into the Deep game. Listen in and check out on all the prototypes they're working on, including their specimen lift mech, climbing system, and also dive deeper into their cat. Let's get ready for the FTC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted at Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. And coming up next on the Open Alliance Show is 17012 Precision Guessworks. And I have Kira and Kevin here uh, talk more about some of their awesome progress that we're doing. Lots of great stuff. So, Kira and Kevin, welcome on. I'd love to have you two introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit more about what you do on your team. Um, hi, my name is Kevin. Um, I am on our 17012 and 1646 team. That's both our FRC and FTC team. Um, in our FTC team, uh, I would like to say that I'm one of the people that like driving things forward. And in our FRC team, I would say that I'm kind of just somebody that does a little bit of everything, try to help out where I can. Um, I'm on, I, I'm also on both um, FRC and FTC. I have about three years of experience for FTC. Um, and I feel like I've seen a lot of growth like between those years. So I'm really happy with where we are so far compared to my previous experiences. Well, let's talk a little bit about that, Akira. Uh, talk to me a little about, you know, we're as we're recording this, just a little bit over a month into the Into the Deep season. So what is some of your progress so far? And then I know we got a whole bunch of great stuff on the table we'll be diving right into. Um, so in previous years, we've gotten stuck on one idea. And I feel like this year we've really tried to branch out. And like you can kind of see from all the stuff on the table and also the CAD we've done and explored different teams. Um, I think that we're doing pretty good with just having an open mind. Very cool. Well, let's talk about what's on the table there. Uh, I know the first thing we're going to be covering is that lift uh, specimen mech on there. So I'd love to hear more about it. Uh, where are you at progress wise for it? And let's dive right into it. Um, so one of the things that we have been working on, yes, is our um, lift mechanism. It's kind of right now it's in, it's in its most crude form, I would say. Um, this is a... Um, uh, spring, a, what is it? Um, uh, constant force spring. Yes. Um, this isn't actually attached, um, to our lift yet as, as again, it is kind of crude. Um, but kind of the basics of this is we have one of these going on the top side of our robot. So it'll lift the, um, this piece right here. It'll lift that up and down. And then we have another, on um, kind of the bottom side of our robot that is acting as like a horizontal slide, kind of drawer slide. Um, and that will be doing our um, sample sample grabber, so. Very cool, when you were looking at this game, was there uh, any other uh, prototypes or concepts that you came up with? And is this the one you think you're gonna move forward with uh, so far? Um, so this is like a prototype slide we're probably moving forward with this, but um, we have had a couple iterations of our sample grabbers and our um, specimen grabbers. Mm -hmm. This right here is one of our um, kind of ideas and prototypes for our specimen grabber. We have a couple um, that are in just CAD form right now that we haven't been able to actually 3D print or put into fruition yet. Um, we're hoping to do that um, and we still have a couple of other ideas on how we can improve this design, trying to make it a little more streamlined and um, able to work in the game field better than kind of on our hands. Yeah, like Kevin was saying, in the future, we hope to maybe take out the servos and have it just kind of slide in there with just the force. So we plan to maybe take the slopes down so we can keep it a little cleaner with the wiring since we have kind of a lot going on inside the robot. So we're hoping to kind of like force its way out and force its way in, in the future. 
That's, that's really cool. I love the the concept behind that. Uh, what kind of testing have you done uh, so far with that to, to see like the viability of it and, and to make sure it is what you want to move forward with? Um, so we don't have like a base or anything with the robot, with, but we've tested it kind of with our hands and seeing it work with the servo. So we've done some proof of concept work, but we haven't seen it in action like on the robot or anything like that. Sure. I, I got to ask something. I was reading your uh, Open Alliance blog on Chief Delphi, and uh, I think the big thing that came up here was Bodie McBoatface. Uh, that's like the <laughs> thing that I saw in there. Uh, but you have a really cool uh, lift uh, uh, scissor climbing system that you're working on as well, too. Can we dive a bit more into that and what you're doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, we saw a robot called Shrinky Dink. It was an FRC uh Mini very, bot. very mini bot. It was yeah. like 10 it, by 10. Yeah, it's Digital 10 by 10. Smaller, yeah. yeah, smaller than uh, our FTC robot. Um, and they used for their main mechanism, they used a boat hook. And we thought that that would probably be a really great way um, to climb. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have our prototype right here, um, our proof of, proof of concept. Um, we have a compliant wheel here to make sure to keep this in tension so that the um, carbon fiber boat hook doesn't kind of spool out. Mm -hmm. And then we have a ovalish type design, I guess, um, that will make sure that since it goes in flat, it'll make sure that this comes out kind of tube shaped and we can have our hook go on the end of this. Mm -hmm. So objective wise, like how quickly are you looking at climbing and, and getting up to the top stage? Like when you're analyzing the game, where does that kind of like go from your priority standpoint and, and how quickly do you want to get done? We hope for it to be pretty quick. Um, so like for the adjustment side, for the adjustment side or having it um, rotate, we plan on that being a little slower, but going up and actually climbing, we plan to have that happen pretty quickly. Um, we also saw another team do, um, they had like a part to go onto the first rung and then they climbed on top or to get to the third stage. They yeah. were hoping to do something like that in the future. Yeah. But we, have, we haven't tried anything with that yet. Well, so early in the game and lots of time to keep iterating and trying different things on that. Uh, before we go into your CAD, I, I know you got a few other things here in tables. Is there anything else that you want to dive in or talk about on there? Um, yeah. So we can talk about this. So this is our first intake idea. And we have these like compliant stars. And we are trying to make this go up and kind of force um, a sample in. But it's a little clunky. So we then tried these smaller compliant stars that we 3D printed, but they're kind of hard, so they weren't ver working that great. And then we moved on to these squishy silicone blue ones that are squishier, but they also weren't working that great. Um, so with this prototype, we haven't had anything too consistent, but we've also been working on a few other things and taken some inspiration from other teams. So this one, for example, is from the Seattle Seattle Solvers, um, <laughs> and uh, we really liked their idea, so we were kind of messing around with that. And yeah, we also have some other ones that we were looking at in CAD form that we haven't prototyped. You know, I noticed on your uh, OA blog uh, that you were posting these uh, mold uh, stars that you have. The blue stars that you're, that you're showing there are, th are these the mold ones. And then can you talk a little about some of your experience uh, actually trying to create these? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these are the same stars from the. And it looked, it looked like you might have had some difficulties for it. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, so this was mainly a mentor-led project. We weren't, <laughs> we weren't a part of, right. I personally wasn't, but so maybe she'd like to talk about it. The long story short <laughs> is I got the mold and I got curious way too fast before I even got to the school. And the one got melty oh. because I wrote is a little bit of hubris. And it says if you heat it, you can cure it a lot faster. <laughs> and then if you pull it out of the mold too soon, it gets a little funny. Well, always uh, try new things is great, though. I'd love to see that on there. Um, be, anything else on the table you want to cover before we go into your CAD? Um, this right here, it's a kill switch for um, the elevator right here. 
So we kind of have a hard stop to make sure that it's not breaking anything, mm -hmm. such as this, uh, we're a specimen grabber. So it'll mount on the side side walls of our robot. And when our slide will come down, basically we'll have it to um, where it'll kind of touch this mm -hmm. and it will say, you shouldn't do that anymore. Um, any other sensors that you're looking at putting on your robot that uh, maybe aren't on yet, but you're thinking about? Um, yeah, we were looking at color sensors for intake, like specifically with this one, um, but we're having a little bit of trouble with it. Um, but that's something that we were kind of thinking to look into further later on. Well, let's dive into your CAD now. Um, we're going to bring that up on screen. You made great progress so far on that. I'd love to hear just more about some of the design behind it and things that you might want to mm -hmm. overview on it too. So a lot of the design came from our initial thinking of the game. So um, we don't do any um, baskets. And with that, we thought that our best course of action would be to do specimen, mm -hmm. high specimen and low specimen. Um, so that's kind of what we've centered our build around. Mm -hmm. And we also thought that a big portion of our um, of our game would be our third stage climb, which is also one of the main pieces that kind of um, centered our build mm -hmm. for um, the robot. So looking uh, from some of your choices on it that you're going with, um, I gotta ask you like, can you, can you give a little bit more overview on like, you know, your motor configs and stuff? Like, why'd you wanna go that route or on your slides? like? I'll talk to me, break down a little bit more about what you uh, were planning to do for motors on your bot. Um, for at least the climber, we know that we want to not fall, basically. Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, a lot of the configurations are high gear ratios so that after the um, game ends and we disable our robot, uh, we can still be sort of counted for those points because our robot didn't fall. And that's also a good thing for your robot not to do. And we also are using a, oh, where did it go? Oh, just one second. Sorry about that. Oh, where is it? There it is. Oh. <clears throat> we are also using a worm gear. Um, one, because we did run, we did run into the issue of running out of motors. So that's why we have use of the servo right here um, that's going to tilt the entirety of our um, boat hook climber and then we also use this worm gear because it doesn't like to back drive so um, once we actually do initiate the climb um, instead of it kind of twisting on its own um, it'll stay put where it's supposed to be very cool. So talking from your team, first off, when does your team compete? When's the season start for your team? January 25th. January 25th. Oh, okay, so so January. So you've got quite a bit of time still uh, to yeah. get in. So how, how are you laying out your time frame to get ready in January as well, too? What are some of the milestones that you want to hit or that you've laid out so far? Um, so, so far, we're hoping to have our – robot done or mostly completed by the end of December so we can have a lot of drive time and so we won't have to be rushing to finish a robot but at the competition or anything <laughs> like that um so and I think we're doing pretty good on that goal so far um in the next few meetings we hope to have most of our parts completed most of our like designs and ideas flushed out and final like finalized on what we're going to add onto the robot well, it's really good timing because I know the next time we're going to have you on is December 3rd. Uh, so we'll be able to see what your progress is uh, so far and then uh, show that off to the uh, community as well, too. Any last things you want to talk about from uh, maybe any lessons learned so far uh, for Into the Deep that some knowledge you can maybe pass on to other teams? I would say that one of the main lessons I've learned from being in robotics is to not stay on one topic for so long. Mm -hmm. That's a very good thing to do um, making sure spreading your time out equally through um, the entirety of the robot um, i know we had struggles in that in past years 
So, and also making sure to keep a good team dynamic also helps a lot. Um, yeah, I think working together and having an open mind, like doing research and using your resources of other teams around you and like previous, um, like previous um, ex expeditions or whatever, like previous things you've worked on. Like, cause I know I brought in my um, F our FRC knowledge a little bit into this. And I think just using your previous endeavors to help. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Karen, Kevin, thank you so much for taking the time uh, going through everything. There's a lot of great things that teams can learn from this. So we wish you best of luck. As mentioned, we're going to have you back on in about a month and a half. So we can't wait to see what your progress looks like as well to you. So good luck the rest of the way. And we'll see you in just a little bit. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.